All right, let's open the first folder, right? View demo here. Uh, this is a standard project, Xcode project. Remember, this workflow is supposed to make sure everyone understands. So please uh, ask questions or stop uh, me along the way. All right, so very quickly on custom views, um, there's something called UI view that's from UI kit and everything you do so far is pretty much UI view. And, uh, but sometimes we want to have custom view, right? We, and in this case, um, there's some reason to use them. Um, you can create a more, um, you can, Put the logic in one piece of code that's separate from the others, and then you can move them between your controllers or move them between your apps easily. And it's also drawing. You can keep the logic of drawing um, just within that view. So UI view is pretty much just remember we have this frame property when you initiate, uh, when instantiate a, a view. So you can actually apply all this core graphics uh, drawing. And there's also hit detection. Sometimes in your UI, a button look a little small, but the UI has to look like that. You cannot create a fat button, just the text there. So if you want the user to tap near the button, but still hit the button, right? So it's not dependent on the size of the button, but maybe you allow that, uh, the user to tap on the container and the button still register as hit, and you can actually overwrite and, and, and set custom interaction using the hit test function. If you ever need it, just search for that. Uh, and then, definitely, controller code is getting busier and busier. So sometimes you put the animation uh, between controller and in there. Uh, the goal is that our controller should be less, um, you know, um, less, less uh, convoluted and full of code. So iOS is still MVC, but so what does MVC stand for? Yeah, yeah. So, or some people say after you do MVC for a long time, it becomes massive view controller, right? So it's just too much, too much view. And then in, in uh, or you know, really fat model in in iOS, it's not really you don't run into fat model problem as much as as the web applications. So, uh, but still, um, putting the view in where it belongs and have separate components very useful. So. We'll do something basic today, uh, using core graphics to draw a few things. And the first walkthrough, if you open the view demo project, uh, basically, I want to build something that, it's an empty dashboard right now. I want to build something that when I run, I have a progress bar. So actually, Apple does have a progress bar. But what if we build it ourselves from scratch, right? So let's do that. I'm running this um, right now and should be empty. This is just a startup project. All right, so let's look into view controller. View controller. It's, really, it's not loading, it's opening all the tabs on my other screen. One second. <laughs> still loading. So I show you this, this screen recording is slowing everything down. Please don't crash. All right, so in here, we're going to load, we build a custom view, and it will look like this. I, I, usually you can put it in, in view did load. Uh, it will look like this. We have a progress bar element, so we call it progress view, and it will look like this. We let we want to access this progress view from different places, uh, different functions. So we have a call, something called progress view. Right? This is a variable. And in here, we instantiate it, uh, create a new instance for it. Progress view. Now, for any UI view, you have two constructors. 
and soon we'll see it. Any UI view it comes with this. Well, the default is that, well, your frame will be zero, 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 uh, you know, x, y, and then width and length. But usually you pass in a frame uh, or you load it um, from um, the data. Right? So we'll cover this next week, but mainly for frame today. So I, I need to add this to my project. Um, we'll put the frame, and frame is just a rectangular kind of data. And if I open this rectangle, you see that we have x, y, width, and height. So let's just put very arbitrarily uh, 0, 0, top left. And uh, width is, actually, what's the, what's the constructor that can help me here? Uh, CG vec. It's not, it's not completing. Okay, so it should be that, there you go. This one, all right. So zero, zero, width. We have a progress bar at the top of the screen. So um, X will be starting, maybe the width will be like 200 pixel. And, and height will make something really light. It's like two pixel. That should be enough. So that's progress view. So we wonder what is progress view here? Uh, well, I created an empty file. So if you don't have it yet, we create this empty class right, by going to new, right, source, Cocoa Touch, and then make sure this is UI view. And it's progress view. So I've already done that for us. So notice in UI view, there's only one method. And one thing to note here is it gives you the flexibility to draw, what, uh, to, to draw whatever you want. But then Apple say, only draw <laughs> if you really need to draw. Normally, don't even, right? If you don't draw anything, don't even have this method because it say that an empty method still affect the performance. That's fine. For the purpose, uh, usually we avoid drawing. But in this case, for the, this purpose, we we'll draw to understand the core, core graphic stuff. And who here has used the uh, programming um, language uh, called Logo, like to draw something, like with a total? Yeah, you, you rem remember that? Uh, in primary school, some of us may have that. My brother did that, but I didn't. I, so it's, the idea is you, you like, it's like you, you pick up the pen and you put the pen down on paper and then you say go left or go right. So co and then you lift the pen. So it's this whole core graphics uh, API in, in iOS is, is as basic as that for you know, like, 30, like 30, 40 years now. So it's nothing sexy. So we'll learn, here's the, line, here's the code, and we, we'll, get, um, we'll copy and, and just, just dissect on how it works, just to save time, right? So pretty much, you st some of you actually want to do drawing in your app, and you know, this, this becomes easier when you draw something, you create a, a function, let's say draw line, and you just call that function. But let's do it the really ugly way here. So first, uh, we, you need to get the context. UI graphics, you get current context. And pretty much anything you do there is, is the context contain all the data about your drawing environment. And then you set the color. So this is not a good way. We set color by, how do we pick a color? Um, say, okay, so I have this primary color, maybe UI color, and I like maybe green, right? Why is my Xcode not completed? All right, green color. Now, here's the interesting thing. Core graphics can't really understand this UI color thing. So we, we use a function here called um, CG context. You can pass the color but the way down here, uh, the all four values, but that's, that's a little ugly. So set stroke color with color. So here's the more convenient method where you pass in the context and you actually pass in CG color. <laughs> so like, you know, it's all backward compatibility stuff. Dot CG color. So then if you turn uh, the CG color type, I don't need this line anymore. So I just set the color for my stroke, right? It means my pen, right? And then you say, well, put the pen down, right? Uh, begin path. Uh, so, well, so here's the tricky thing. You can, you have 
methods to draw rectangle fill with color. And a few of them is very good. You have undo uh, and redo operation. So the context, you can actually save the context. It has the method to restore it. But with path, it's a little tricky. Path um, is not as, uh, it doesn't really fully support restoring. So if you, that's, that's just the gist of that. Uh, so here we're just about to draw a line and say begin path and you, you move to a point, start by the, the first point, that seems easy enough, right? We call at line to point and we're gonna draw it. So here, let's draw it to somewhere. Uh, technically, I can, my progress bar, when it's full, I wanna draw it the entire, the entire uh, width of my progress bar, right? We Imagining we have this progress bar already drawn. So it looks like this, width, and then, well, it can stay at zero, right? This is the internal co coordinate of the frame. So remember our, our UI view, progress view? We just basically have like one long line. Add line to point, so you draw from zero horizontally to the width. That looks okay, right? X and Y coordinate. And then you just say, you know, stroke path. So if I do it right, I should be able to get something. Uh, when we build this. Okay, so what is the error here? We have, we need one more print, and let's run this. Wow, computer is very slow. Is it running? on well quitting all the other apps oh my god all right please show us something at least all right nothing is showing up well, what do you think Sub view, <laughs> yeah. So view dot at sub view progress view. Is that enough? Dot view. Wait, sorry. A uh, progress view dot view. Oh, progress view is a view. So, so it's okay. All right. We still don't see anything, do we? Well, it's still loading, right? Oh, it's way up there. So this is the green color. So that's not nice. Let's put this like way down. I put it, maybe it's like from 10 to uh, the 10, 10 here. So here's the trick. If I didn't draw anything in, in uh, progress bar, right? If I don't do anything, then what color do you think this UI view has? So let's say I put this guy in a you know 200 by 200 block. If I didn't didn't draw anything, what is the color? What's the default color? You know, it's black. So maybe that's a good way to see. Uh, so it is black. But basically, I say, well, I don't want to see that black thing. You know, I only want two pixels. Technically, it's only one, right? So hopefully, we can see that. So let, let's get to business. Let's make the progress bar run. It should be down here, right? 10 pixel. Can we see it? Oh my god. All right. Still, okay, maybe make it like 100. All right, so my, I'm surrendering. I think my computer is freaking out. Okay. All right. So, who has an idea on how do we implement the progress? So we start with a progress here, progress, CG float. Let's start progress from zero, maybe from zero to one, basically. And here, let's pre- Yeah, uh, thank you for asking. So, uh-oh, I thought I had to plug in to do that. Now everything is just like, so I'm having, um, right, so let's make it bigger.
presentation. Awesome. All right, better, right? Let's make this progress thing. And uh, how can we make this progress work? Well, by now we don't want to mess with the logic of this, uh, you know, in in the controller. By now our our shift is good enough, so we're gonna put it in the view. All we we just all we care about is setting the progress for the progress view. But we want it to be going from zero to one, hundred percent. So a trick to pretend we're doing a loading something is we use an NS timer. Schedule. It's really slow. So maybe every five. Uh, that's the wrong method. Wrong signature to run. This second one, right? So let's say every point one second, and I run it. Well, selector is a tricky one to type, right? So I'll just do um, on timer. Take one argument. I don't need any additional information. User info is when you add more stuff to it. So let's add a function here called on timer, and you have a timer. Just like any of the, um, like you know, when you do s gesture, then you have argument is gesture. This timer is like that. Uh, so, what do we do in timer? Every time the timer is run, so progress will add a little bit of, um, just like point one to it. And if progress is greater than one, we're just gonna stop the timer. And that should be it, right? If not, it just keep going. So maybe I'll just print uh, progress. Show where it is. All right, but now we need to set this progress. So progress view dot progress is progress. We're setting the progress into the view, right? So our, our custom view is becoming a little smarter. Uh, we're gonna go to progress view um, and we need a property so this is progress CG float and by now you can actually you can just go straight and assume that you, right usually it's a good way right using did set because after you set the property all the dependent UI uh, stuff can be uh, done here so what what do we do here? Do we draw again? Yeah, so we just like call and draw again. So if you do any UI thing, it's called like setting it as dirty, right? So you have a dirty UI, um, a dirty flag, and it print again. So uh, that Apple actually has something called set needs display. So this set needs layout, set other things. But here it just means it's going to call this, it's going to draw it again. Well, but when I draw it, now I'm just going to do draw it dynamically. So now I change this. I don't want to draw the entire bar. I just draw some congress, uh, I know, progress. Uh, the, the width is probably at 50%, 70%. That seems clear enough, right? So what's the error here? Well, the error is because you need an exclamation point here. Now with Swift, if you don't, right, Swift will say you need an initializer or constructor that set this value. So a lot of time you inherit from these guys that already include the init method. So you don't want to go in there and set it. So you say, well, just assume that I have it, right? So it's an exclamation mark. So if I have that, the view run the timer, and every second it just update the progress progress bar. If I'm lucky, I'll see something way up here. I'm not going to zoom again because my computer is just freak out. All right. So what's the uh, what's the problem? Right. We didn't set it, right? So we need the initial value to be zero here, right? And one second, five. And let's let's make this a little bigger. Uh, Notice I just draw from zero zero all the way to zero a hundred or something like that. I'm going to draw another line just to make it 
twice as bold. So from 001 to let's say 101. So it just means now you see a thicker line, right? So you can go back and use a different method to draw, um, but we're using the line draw for now. Where's my and view controller? We'll put it way down so it's easy to see. Down, go down south. It means coordinate is a hundred. I've been having jet brains running, right? That's why it's so crazy closing it. Okay, let's see, please. All right. If things work correctly, we'll see something printed out on the console. Is it still loading? Let's, let's see why. What's going on? All right, it's running. Oh, it's supposed to run every point one second. This is what a sixty gigabyte give you, machine give you, so memory give you. So maybe we should even sixteen gigs is not enough. All right, so it's stuck at. This is two hundred pixel, right? Uh, we could do better by changing this to this width here to um, the entire frame width and of course if I want to give some padding take 10 pixel from there and 10 pixel from here and if I run it it's pretty straightforward we have the progress bar updated now it runs across the entire screen let's, let's zoom in and hopefully have some sense of satisfaction there Except that it will take a long time to run, so I don't even know. Wait, what happened? It, so, oh, I need to scroll up. Yeah, so, so up here. All right, so I think we're happy. Now, normally, you can do this when you use any downloading uh, library, right? You, you run the, um, it runs the task, a background task. It dispatches the downloaded uh, the network request and give you a status of how much completed it's a percentage and you can do this to do your own um, percentage thing now you know how on the iPhone uh, screen if you download an app you see the logo and then you see a it looks like really dark and then start having this thing that look like a pie and it's like starts swiping it's the same idea you can do exactly the same thing by of course you now have to write a lot longer uh, call graphics syntax to it. say okay apply the context here and then you set the mask and what's what's drawing right the mask is to make this darker and then you start drawing this and you have to like cut it in a circle so it looks kind of nice we don't have time for that but we start out by having like something basic for our uh, UI view now let's do something more interesting UI view here you have to draw it yourself and that's that's really lame. We have the, the interface builder, so we don't want to do that. So in the same project, I just created one. Uh, let's create a file, and uh, this is what it looks like. I'll just create another one, right? My first step here, but create a new file. Now this time, we create a zip file for the first time. Use interface, here's, these are really similar, the, these first three. The launch screen is not as similar where you hook the launch screen up with very little logic, but uh, so that's you already have as launch screen that storyboard there. So view and empty is pretty much the same thing, except except you have you know a view already created over there. So I'm gonna call this my second, right? My second dot zip. So you call it zip, and uh, what is the format of this file? Do we know? XML. Excellent. Yeah, just like storyboard. It looks exactly like it. So here, interface builder. So when you see anywhere, it say IB, and this is what it is for um, a zip file, XIB, and it notice it just basically have two objects right now: uh, files owner and first responder. 
Now we want to be able to use something in here. So I'm going to go back and add open as XLB and then let's add something to it. Similar to storyboard, you can actually add a label. You can add maybe a view to it. So UI view. Right. Uh oh. Well this looks really big. Does anyone know how to change this view? We cannot resize it. So <laughs> kind of funny right but it just assume that this is your main view so your container view usually that's yes, what you want you never want to have like two elements like this but it's just for this purpose we just have it so that you know we we, we know that oh this XML file include two guys but here um, I'm gonna set it to click on this ruler thing set to freeform now after I choose freeform I can actually set whatever size I want so let's make it a lot smaller. Uh, now you can actually set the property. Maybe this is just you know three hundred by one hundred, and let's set a color to it. Where's the color? Right, this one. Can't choose the color. Uh, green. All right. So label will be like hello. Uh, zip. So we have these two guys. Let's figure out how we can get these into our view, like not programmatically, right? Uh, one, before we do that, right click, open as source code again. And you see that what it does is that now you actually have not these placeholder, the first two that we mentioned. We actually have label and view. And pretty straightforward. Some property, you can change it yourself. Some of them are read only. But you see how this is Objective C syntax also the same yes and no. But with Swift, this change to just you know label dot user interaction enabled to true and so or false. All right, so let's load this from our um, controller. Let's load this and add it to our view. Load add it here. All right, who here has tried something like this? So let's say maybe I'll move this setup uh, progress bar and let's move this over here um, so that it's cleaner, uh, it's easier to see. So that's the first thing we did, setup progress bar. Second thing we did, uh, we do is to the concept of nip. So zip is the XML file and nip is just the binary representation of it. So you can load it. And you can load it by um, set it, telling it what file to look at. So similar to the storyboard thing now, right? So what is this name right here? My second, right? And then leave this as, as nil. I've never seen this not nil. So if anyone knows why, let me know. So now we have that, and there's a very important method that's useful. Uh, it's called nip dot instantiate with owner so then you're like owner ah remember your view controller and then you on storyboard you click on that view controller thing and you set it to the class name of your view controller so that's the owner but here do we care about the owner hmm all right we we'll, we'll set it to nil for now you can actually set it to nil as well and this is less important but the owner thing will revisit so what does it return? Does anyone know what it returns? It return any object. See that? Huh, what does it mean? Any object. So I will just do let objects equal that. And let this print it. So for object in objects, let's print uh, object, object. Let's run this. Well, we nothing to see here except, all right, look at this guy. You have the first guy, UI label, second guy, UI view, simple. So now we know that we can do whatever we want. We just create as many view files as we want. It's just like HTML, you just have HTML code, except now it's, 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 you know, it's zip file, right? Well, what can we do here if we want to add it to our view? 
how do we add it to our view? So maybe view one is objects zero, right? As what? UI label, maybe. And then maybe you do the same thing for view two. Here will be this is UI view. Let's add it, right? So here let's okay, let's be simple. Auto layout on code is not as, as fun. So let's just do it the non-auto layout way. Uh, I have view dot add sub view, view one, but now it's a little problem, right? We uh, we didn't really give it a frame. It's okay, it overflows. So you don't give it a frame, but it can still work. So I'm gonna say frame dot origin dot y. Let's say, you know, let's just it's about zero there, right? Let's add it like one hundred down, and then the second guy. Uh, this here will be like 300. So add these two, right? Let's see if we actually can see it on our storyboard. Awesome. Halo zip here, 100 down, and then 300. So that's kind of nice. Uh, now we know that it's not that much magic. The magic that we need to uncover next is how does the dragging, right? How does the binding work between the code and the, the view? So before we do that, let's go back and do something that's considered best practice. Don't have more than one element in, in here. So when you click on this view, look how it has this battery sign and you know, like, hey, this is your container view. Don't just do stuff like that. So maybe I'll just put it, I'll just move this in, in here. All right. So now you can actually build, for example, your Twitter app. You can start building, this is your uh, label, um, comment equal, to just bring it to the, the natural la uh, intrinsic label size. And I put it maybe like here, this will be like, you know, um, tweet handle. So let's say maybe, you know, this is my tweet handle. And then I can insert UI view to it. Uh, no, image view, right? Image view. And you can do do things now, you don't have to inter uh, interrupt each other's flow. You can be the person who work on this feature. And auto layout works the same. You can use uh, iOS stack view uh, yourself. And here, let's say 100 by 100, and that's fine. Great. But we want to be able to bind this with something, right? Now, uh, the next concept is owner, files owner. So here, if I bind it to self, I will be able to, two steps I have to do. One here is that instantiate with owner. Let's say if I instantiate with myself, which is this controller, I have to go back to this view and go to files owner. And I also have to set it in this driver's license. Notice that it's default to just NS object, it's just an object in Swift. So here you can actually tell it to use view controller. And then you drag it over. But that's uninteresting. That's like go back to making my controller crazy again. So let's not do that. What I want to do is to create my second dot xib. Uh, no, dot swift. So I have a my second zip file. I'll just create this thing call. Go back to source, Google Touch class. Uh, my second, this time, it is a view. It's a view. It's just zip file. Now, do you see this option? Do you know why it's grayed out? Why? Why is it grayed? Well, if you let me do this, you know, I don't have to do what I just did. Well, this option is only available for your controller. So there's this additional logic that takes care of it, and then there's a whole controller life cycle. But if you want flexibility and less, you know, overhead, you definitely want to do view. So in here, I just have my view, and this is my second. All right, so let's do it ourselves. It's more fun. So I have my second Swift. Now I don't need to do this draw, drag stuff anymore. Let's delete it. What I want is to load. See, similar to the code I have in the controller, right? I want to load it here. I need to instantiate with owner and load them. Now it's a little tricky because when do I load them? After I in initialize, 
right? So now I have to go and copy my initializer. Where's my initializer? These two guys. These two guys are my initializer. And uh, this is the primary initializer. There's a whole long page. Uh, when you work on it, sometimes you're like, oh my god, what is required in it? What is in it? What's optional in it? You know, it's it's all in there. So I won't explain, but like once you get it, it's, it's pretty easy to understand, but then one month later you forget. So it's okay, just read it again. So we actually overwrite these two methods. These two actually already public, already, um, you know, so I'll just type, we need to do init this one. All right. So to overwrite this is simple. We always call the uh, that first, and then same here. Super dot init frame. All right. So the good thing it's it's not nightmarish. What we want to do is load my view, right? So we we add a method here called uh, totally, totally. You know, if you really want to be strict about it, just load my view, right? Load sub views. Or you can call it like init subview because eventually it's called in your init anyway. And you want to call it in init subview here. Uh, why is it not showing? Now it's going to say like required. Yeah, it's fine. Fix it for me. And all right. So that's fine, right? Um, this is good. Init subview. This, I forgot the word function, right? All right. So what do we do in here? Coder, coder, a coder. A. So this is keyword argument. Um, you allow you to have a, like a keyword and then a ver different variable name. All right. Now let's let's think what we need to do in here. It's, by now it's pretty safe, straightforward. We need to do the knit UI knit and notice we'll, we'll use this later. You can actually get it from data. And when you do that with data, it will run this constructor thing, right? Uh, it goes well with that. But we we just go with string here. So my second. Bundle is nil. Uh, and what's next now? Knit dot instantiate with owner. Now remember, we, now we have only one container view. So you don't really need to get what it is. Um, you can actually just say let container view here, right? It's a list. So you need to like get the first element. I have a different way of getting it. So I'm just going to ignore it. It's nothing. OK, great. So I have that. And go back to my zip. I'm going to tell this files owner to be my second. And as soon as you do that, you have this assistant editor right showing up. And so now we can do something like I drag this to be, let's say, tweet handle uh, label. Let's and name label. It's a little shorter. All right? Well, what is more important actually is this guy. You want it, it's very common. So just because you um, you want to get the container view. So we we'll name it con in controller, you have to call view, right? So yeah, so earlier um, um, it's container view fung, fung, right? Or fung, fung, right? You, you say um, call dot view. But here let's say we any of this view UI view thing actually has a container view in there so we call it container view so technically this guy is returning a list of container view which is just only one view uh, but we already able to do it with container view so that should be good enough now but that's not good enough we need to add it to this UI view let's add it to this UI view uh, how do we add it how do we add it to the UI view? Add sub view. Notice UI view is still, right? UI view is still a view. So add sub view, and you want to get to container view. And in this container view, um, wait, 
let's, let's make it bigger. Uh, second. Okay. But before we, we do this, right, we need to have set the, the, the size. So this is container view, and we want to do container view dot frame. This is the frame that it should cover. What is the frame? You want the container view to cover the entire UI view element, right? And what is it? So you can go do like C, G, VAC, what I just did before, and X, Y. So this will be 0, 0, width will be the same as frame.width and frame.height. And that's a short method for that. It's called bounce. So that will return you a CG VAC. Great. So every time you include a UI view, this UI view is an abstraction, an encapsulation. You can make something behave like a UI view and you can plug it into your code. This UI view can contain images, can do a lot of things, can have its own logic. So it's very, it's a good way to structure your code. But now that should be good, good enough. And now in my view controller, instead of this ugly, ugly guy, which I now just put it down as func or uh, method one. Just put it here, but I'm not using it, right? In here, I'm just gonna do let second view is second view. Now here, let's say I, I give it uh, right my second. I give it the frame one more time. So you can actually give it the frame of the entire uh, iPhone screen, but you don't want that, right? You just want it to be the top, and then maybe at the bottom you show your uh, table view. So here will be um, CG right zero zero. Uh, width here will be sure. Give I give you the same the whole width. So view dot frame dot width and height. I'll just give you three hundred pixel, the top three hundred. And now I can just add view dot add sub view, uh, second view. All right, what's going on? I didn't close. Let's run this. So as you divide the work, this component is fully featured in here. It's nice. You can have the logic where, let's say, second view, you can do, I don't know, maybe up, update some, some data. But you can have a property. Of course, you can set the label like this. But this is not good. Because you want to set some property. And in, in that view, the view take care of how to present that data. right? But here you're actually accessing the element. Then you go back to assignment one and assignment two again. So it's really up to you, though, because sometimes it's much faster to do it this way and just change it later. So that's view. That's nice, right? And we understand a little bit more about the zip thing. Now let's open the zip file one more time. Source code. Do you notice anything new in this zip file? there is something called connections and it's inside this files owner thing and this is the reason why if you rename your variable after you already draw the connection your xcode will kind of crash and say like you know uh, key not found key error because what it's trying to do here is that it say well you have this thing called name label and then suddenly you change it to tweet name and then it say well you know there's this thing called that and there's an id for EE something here and then if I search for this string right well not not in this one huh? uh, TBP right so it's down here I should be able to find another occurrence down here where we are tying this label to that variable name right this this name has this destination which is the ID of this label so just one of these IDs change, it will cause you a lot of problem. And this is also pr the problem if you merge storyboard and you're not careful. Uh, sometimes yeah, you, know, you have two elements, two, you run on two places, people rename things, uh, create a new one, thinking that it works, same name, but different ID. You can't see that on storyboard. And then when you merge them, you don't know which one to choose. If it crashes, well, sometimes 
I've helped a lot of teams in the past that just like we go into this story profile and I'm like, okay, which IDs? So I just remove them, and then you know merge, and then you run it, and hopefully it works, right? And it does. Uh, but the, just check the connections here, right? And then the connection have that destination matching with your view, and notice how it is now in your sub views, right? And you only have one container view. That's why it's much easier. Earlier you have like label view. Now always have one container view. This thing is called container view. And then this thing is sub view. This is very powerful. It doesn't seem like this, but imagine I have a UI view, my second right now is called my second, right? That act exactly like an image view or a slider. It just pretend to act like that. It has the same API. You see how, for example, you have image.set image with URL. In uh, my second now, if I don't use AF networking, I don't have that method, right? Right? So technically, you're going to implement a method right here, fun set image with URL, and then you handle the background downloading the data, and then there's a callback, and you say dispatch it in uh, the main view that update the image. Uh, you can do that. So this is a, net, uh, you know, a, a container that can just pretend to be a lot of things. So next up, we'll do uh, controller. Right? Let's create one. I'm going to create one. To compare, new file. This time I call it uh, maybe second view controller, but let's say change it to UI view controller first. So second, all right. So we don't even have the first. So uh, so I just call it my first. Uh, first, it's okay. And this time I say create an X, uh, uh, XID file, a zip file. Now these two are already hooked up together, and notice how we have like we just call the, the class name of the view, and then you, you put it into your controller uh, with my second view, just in view that view did load right of your view controller with with this view controller though. How do you bring a view controller into your program? If you have it in your in your storyboard, you give it a name. And you recycle it. There's a method storyboard dot instantiate with storyboard ID, right? Instantiate view controller with storyboard ID. So, but if I want to bring this controller in, there are many ways to do it. One, you can actually go to your app delegate, and here you can add the controller to it. Like, I can set it to be, you know, let. I can even set a var variable here, var my first type first view controller first view controller so here if you just want to ignore your storyboard and then here you actually do um, first view controller after the app finish launching you define it here only once right controller is a lot more you don't want to redefine your controller and uh, this this is first and then we say first view controller like that, and it's fine. And you can actually make this start with, say, root view controller, first view controller. Uh, so this this guy. So every time you set root view controller, you can set it many times. But every time you set it, automatically your app switch that controller to the first controller, right? And then if you run this now, it will run this controller instead. Okay, let's take a quick look at this zip file. It's very similar. So the logic is pretty much just as similar as before, right? But notice this is only one view. And if you use it as an interface builder thing, same. Of course, if it looks too big, let's change it again. If I wanted to make it look like an iPhone, I don't want to resize. This is just simulated metrics. It doesn't affect how uh, you know, it show outside if you use auto layout. But OK, it looks more like an iPhone 5S. And then here, notice that's a container view, and I can add anything here, right? So you can use auto layout as usual. Click here, drag here, and say center horizontally in this guy, and then that's one condition not good enough. Center vertically, so you have a hello right in the middle, and then you uh, update frame, it's, it's there. And if I run, Hello, right? 
I already skipped my storyboard altogether. Now, what if I want to click here and then, you know, go to the other controller? That's when App Delegate now here is powerful again because, well, you don't have your code in, you know, view controller here. View controller is, is ignored right now, right? So technically, what if you want to say randomly? <laughs> it's like if, right, you know, uh, so true, let's say there's a variable there, but uh, now you want to say if, you know, flag. So let's say let flag is true here. And you run that, but else you actually want to run the second controller. But how do you call that second view controller there? So to call it, you have to go to storyboard and name it. Click on this guy. Notice we using the same name, we haven't renamed it. But now you have to give it a storyboard ID. It's right here, storyboard ID. So I say view controller, same as the class name, so it's easy to remember. And go back here. So I say my view controller is uh, you can also just do var here and then that will be now we can do this view controller don't do it this way because you're actually creating another instance right what you want is hey storyboard when you load the XML file right when you load the XML file from storyboard uh, there's a method that does that so we have to do hey load me the storyboard so storyboard equals does anyone remember UI storyboard this guy obviously from main.storyboard notice how similar it is and now I have my storyboard it just basically gives you the instance of the, the storyboard and then now you can say storyboard.instantiate uh, view controller with identifier this is my view controller so on a good day maybe if your user is logged in you can actually say right if flag is false it should go to my view controller right so that's the idea. It created it. It's in the memory. I. All I'm saying is right now when you load it, I go to this old guy. So it's nice, right? And of course, if you want to be like really flexible, not the best way, but to understand the structure is important. In this first view controller, uh, let's go in here. If you want to just have a segue, do something dynamically, how do you get the... How do you get this, this, that controller, the other controller? How do you get it? I mean, you can do the same thing again. Or it can be a waste. If you have the memory, um, if you have this variable already, so you can do, let's say if I'm in this, for now, let's say I go to view controller. You can actually say, this view controller, right? That's a button. I can just move there. Present. Maybe I have a button. Uh, I don't have a button right now. But I can say, after this one is loaded, sleep for two minutes, uh, maybe sleep for two seconds, and present view controller. I want to do that first controller, and uh, I need the variable first, right? Let first controller, how do I get it? You actually can cheat by going back to your delegate. I'm not showing you all of this to, for you to do it this way, okay? Just uh, it can be a bad way to... <laughs> <laughs> application delegate sometimes it's very useful to know this so that you can set what belongs to your delegate and whatnot and then in that delegate you can actually have your first controller and of course here it doesn't work yet because you need to cast it as app delegate and so that will be my let app delegate and then now I have this uh, app delegate dot oh don't auto complete like that they're late. Okay, fine. Uh, first view controller. You see that? I have that. And now I can just present it. Right? Sleep for two seconds. And then first controller. Uh, Animate it. And then I don't do anything. So you have a lot of flexibility. And uh, you know how the different components are connected. Right? Two seconds. Is it like... Is it actually sleeping? And is it... Okay, it's not working. Is it sleeping? All right. Well, we have a lot to cover, so let me let me check on this one first, and we we'll see how it goes. All right.
Any question about controllers, UI view? No question so far? So we get to the next one, which is also crazy, uh, but it's fun. Uh, animation and custom segue. We will take a break, uh, a break, like three minutes. Drink water. Yeah, why is it sleeping? No, it's not working. So let's say print sleeping, and then done sleeping. Is it a sleep? How do we get the um, two seven? Making the UI sleep is like the mo worst possible function you can write. <laughs> Today is on how to write bad code. Sleeping. Oh, maybe it's done sleeping. So it's like. I think this should be in view did appear, and then so that we don't. Let's see. View did appear, and here. Hopefully, it run later. Come on, please help me. Why does it not work? Uh, it's too oh, it works! Woohoo! So to make it work. Hopefully your break is over. Uh, I move it to view did appear. <laughs> so that's good. And it, it jumped right there. OK, so I'm going to close this app. And I'm going to close this file. So that's the first part.